Hey everybody, Terry here, D-Lab in the shop. Today I have a unique project. This National 300 receiver has a broken drive cable that turns the drum as you select the bands. Could be a real booger, could be an easy one. Let's see if I can fix it. All right, here she is. Turn the band, change switch, and nothing happens. The drum is just like, floating okay so if you look here there should be a dial cord here and it goes down across two pulleys it's got like a chain drive that goes off of that band switch well it's broke but I have the replacement chain drive and cable right here so the question is is there an easy way to change it or do I have to pull the face Here's the information the National gives you. They show you the routing, they show you the dimension of the cord and the drive chain, but that's it. They don't tell you how to do it. I think though that I've discovered a way. Let me show you. Now I've got the receiver up on one end, and if you look way down there, you'll see the little indents on this cammed lever that normally turns the dial drum and way up in here there's a couple pulleys that the cord rides on so what I'm thinking is I remove this plate and I should have access I can route the cable down through there come up to the drum hook it up all's well let's give it a shot so right off the bat something interesting going on here the shaft pulls right out of the dial drum and it's like floating. So I'm assuming that something is broken. Maybe this was a press fit. I don't know. I'll address that after I get this plate off. But the plate should pop right off. These screws just go into the chassis with some nuts. And then there's a couple of screws that look like they come through the front. So I should be able to lift this and gain access to the end of the drum and the cam little chain drive. All right, got all the hardware off of there. There goes the plate. There's the pulleys. There's my dial drum. So according to the instructions, they want you to put the band at 160 meters, position the drum, string the cable, and good luck from there. Well, sorry this is very difficult for you guys to see. It's not exactly easy for me to do, but what I want to do is slide this dial cord back behind this little cogged pulley. Hopefully grab a hold of it from the other side, loop it around, bring it up, go through the pulleys, around the drum, you get the idea not going to be a simple task. Looks like this is a job for some needle nose. Let's see what I got. There they are. So anyway, I'm going to bring it down under this pulley. Hopefully you'll be able to retrieve it. Can be big fun but this is better than pulling the face and having everything else fly apart look at there I got both ends and get the chain in there bring this up through get it on those pulleys not being fat city so very difficult to show but I have the chain routed around the little sprocket, I guess you can call it. Got the cables coming up. Just need to come up around these pulleys. We're almost there. Alright, so if you look at my routing, the bottom chain is good. 
but there's one above it and I'm on the bottom side of that shaft it needs to go on the top side so this is quite the trick people you have to be patient so the cords are strong and I've got them reconnected to the side of the band drum the next thing I need to do is pull this tight and turn the band switch and make sure everything lines up and then I'll put her back together all right, I'm just going to keep some tension on the drum. Make sure she'll increment so there's 80, 40, and it's hanging up. I guess that's just me. Back to 80, 40, 20. Looking good. Chain drive looks good gonna be fine all right I'm gonna get this thing back together before it all flies apart on me so I was getting ready to put the side back on and I noticed this hole and this is where the pin goes through that holds the dial drum I notice it's really sloppy and this pin is not retained at all it just kind of sits there and I thought man you know this hole doesn't look right. It's always something, isn't it? So I went out, grabbed my hanger queen, and there is what the hole should look like. So I'm going to change the whole side panel because this obviously will never work again. There's a new side panel. Got the pen installed, put a little bit of lube on it. Sorry that I have to shoot this vertically, but I need gravity to kind of help me out with this process because I do not want this thing to let loose on me. It would really ruin my day. All right, everything's still in place. Now I just need to line this panel back up and get the screws in. All right, one final word of advice on aligning your dial drum if you see that it is off a little bit you can carefully grab the drum and grab the chain drive underneath and you can increment it you'll feel it jump over the sprocket do it carefully move the drum and the chain on the sprocket at the same time and you can get perfect alignment so we'll check our bands again there's 160 80, so on and so forth. Luckily, I was able to get that back on without having to pull the face because that's a real nightmare. So before I fire it up, I noticed this. This can was obviously hit at one time. Somebody put a zippity doo dah on there to retain it. But I have to fix that because if the terminals underneath are hitting the chassis, it could really do some damage. So I need to investigate that. All right, well, there's that little adjustable can in the back of the radio. I can see what the problem is. There's a nut missing. You can just barely see it under the harness there, but the nut's gone and it got hit. And this one is actually bent up and it appears to be touching those terminals. I hope it didn't do any damage. So I'm gonna repair that first and then we will try a power up. All right, once again, the plot thickens. I thought that that thing straightened out pretty easy. It's because it's actually sheared out of the can and somebody tried some JB Weld. That's probably what the tie strap was holding. So once again, I'll get into my hanger queens. I'll pull that shield and replace it. So they had some little interlocking tabs. The coil itself looks fine. I'll remove this old hardware and go back to the hanger queen and retrieve one. So here's our donor in the hanger queen. Get this one removed carefully. Transfer it onto the other radio. It's always good to have a hanger queen. This one's lovely. It's been around here a long time. I've used a lot of parts off of it. Here we go. Get that in there. I'm going to have to stop and get this positioned, but you get the idea. So in case you're wondering 
how could that can have gotten damaged? Well, Envision, you're working on your NC300 upside down, like this. And you didn't use something to prop it up. Guess what it's going to rest on? That IF can. Happens a lot, guys. you got to really be careful when you work on this vintage equipment. Because most guys don't have a hanger queen around to get parts off of. Alright, so I've resolved that issue. Then I was looking over here in the filter cap area. Isn't that lovely? But I'm not going to worry about that right now. At this point, I just need to get this thing fired up and make sure it receives. And then I'll get in here and take care of the cosmetics. Alright, so I just turned on the receiver and guess what? I have no receive. So, so look at here. Got the special guest star, Emmy the Radio Tech. <laughs> Not short wave girl. All right, Emmy, here's the deal. The NC300 is powered up, but I have absolutely no audio. This should be like hissing right now on the speaker. So I'm gonna kill the lights, and you're gonna do an inspection and tell me what you see, okay? All right, so I've killed the lights, so Emmy can give this thing a visual inspection. Obviously, the dial drum's happy, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, ships could see that from the ocean. All right, give it a look over and tell me if you spot anything. I see some problems with the tube. Some of them seem not glowing. Like which one? This one. Whoa, 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 whoa. You spotted that real quick. So go ahead and touch it and tell me if it's warm. It won't hurt you. Nope, not warm at all. Okay, the other ones are the on, yep, though, right? Yeah, they're all on. Okay, yeah, you don't want to touch the ones that are on, so I'll tell you what. I'm going to shut it off, I'm going to let you put a tube in, we'll try it again, okay? Yeah. Alright, stand by. So this is Emmy's first tube change. She's never done it. She's seen me do it. Alright Em, let's change out that. And by the way, that is a 6AQ5. Audio a output tube. Yeah, I got a spare for you right here. Okay. But I can't okay. give it to you until you pull that out. Get it out of there. Yep. There you go. Just want to make sure it's careful. Yep, there's a new one. Boy, those okay. pins look pretty toasty on that one. Yep, okay. that seems about right. Uh huh. Here we go. Get it in. All right. Yep, it's in there. Cool. All right, I'm gonna turn it on and tell me if you see that one glowing. I'll, I'll kill the light for you. Hold on. No. It's what? Not glowing. So, I think there is a problem with the radio, not the tube. Ooh. Yeah, we can't have two bad tubes. So, what I'm guessing is, is the uh, six volt filament wiring is not getting to that tube or we have a damaged tube socket. Sometimes, if you have a tube socket that's not working well, if you tip it, you'll see the tube light. But this one's not doing it. So, Terrible troubleshooting, Emmy. That wasn't the problem. Unfortunately. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to oh. shut it off, and I'm gonna tip it upside down. And take a look. Thanks for your help. All right, so I'm wire oh, here. Good. We know the tube didn't light, but this socket looks like super nasty, right? Correct. So I'm gonna measure the filament pins, which is three and four on the meteroid. You come over here. Tell me what you see on the meter, because the audience can't see it because of me. What do you got? Seven twenty. 7020. Yep. So we got filament voltage there. So more than likely, our problem is just a terrible connection on this tube socket. Like I say, sometimes. So maybe the wires aren't exactly reaching or. Well, the socket's just like worn out. So the voltage. There, look. Look it. See the bottom? See the bottom of it? There it is. Hear it? There it is. There it is. So guess what we have to do? What? Change the socket. I can't fix it. Got to change. Bummer, huh? So once again, not very easy access to that tube socket, but I got to change it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go top side and cut the pop rivets off with my Dremel tool, and then drop the socket out from the bottom. I don't dare put a drill up in there and try to drill out the bottom of the pop rivets on my damage wires. So you can get a pretty good look at the existing 6AQ5 socket. Looks pretty bad. So what I have here is a nice 
cinch socket which is also bottom mounting should go right in like it was made for it so I'm going to take my Dremel tool with this little cutoff wheel I'm just going to cut the tops of these pop rivets off knock them through and the socket should fall out all right they're ground off and I just take a center punch push them out that guy's ready to pull up from the bottom all right so Emmy as usual you're right grandpa's wrong as remember, always. Yeah. Remember you were saying maybe the wire wasn't making good connection? I was like, no, it's the socket, right? Mm -hmm. I want you to look at something. Take the old magnifying glass. <laughs> oh, that's good. Take the magnifying glass. And I want you to look in there at the tube socket. Okay? So it's where right, is it? It's right there. Okay. Oh. <coughs> that's really nice. Okay. Yes, it okay. Is. Look through the magnifying glass. Now, there, there's the tube socket, oh, right? Oh, I see it. Yep. See this pin right here? Look yep. what's happening when I'm moving it. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's not good. You see that it? That shouldn't be happening. It's not connected. It's a bad solder joint, and that was one of the filament wires. This is why you always listen to short wave, girl. <laughs> well, guess what? I got to change the socket now either way because I cut the stupid pop rivets. I've got the new one here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, Grandpa's hacked again. Haha. <laughs> yeah, see ya. Have fun. Yeah. Right, I got the new socket in place. Here's the old one. I cut the leads off. I prepped the new socket with the resistor and the ground runners. Now I just need to get in here with tweezers and hook up everything else. All right, so what I want to explain to you guys is when I'm doing this kind of work, to me, it's brain surgery, right? I usually have some music going, a hidden glass of wine, and I'm doing all this work with my soldering iron, an X-Acto knife, and tweezers. So that's why you should pay D-Lab more money. Because I'm torturing myself for you guys. Well, there's the new 6AQ5 socket installed. A little bit of brain surgery. Got shortwave girl in the background making some uh, modulation there, huh girl? Well, there's our new 7-pin cinch socket for the 6AQ5 tube, which is audio output. So the next question is, do we have any audio? So I've got a jumper wire off the back of the receiver, but right now I'm just looking for white noise. Yep. I think we got us a dirty pot, but we got audio. So the next thing I need to resolve is that filter cap underneath and then I'll give this thing a full test. So I'm not a big fan of these floating caps. So I'm going to secure that with one of my little D-Lab tube socket filter cap assemblies and get this cleaned up. Well there's a new D-Lab filter cap installed. Time for final checkout of the NC300. So there's what the new filter capacitor assembly looks like from underneath. So yes, this is a tube socket that is soldered to the base of the old filter cap retainer. And then of course the wires swing onto it. For the cost, you can't beat it. You can build this for about $3 where a filter cap like this would be about $40. Okay, success. Repairing the National 300 receiver. I'm using a Wavetech signal generator right now. Putting on a signal on 27 megahertz exactly. And that's where the dial's at. So calibration's good. Now the repairs that I performed on this receiver were not out of the ordinary. I always have these come in here with broken dial cords, bad tubes, bad filter caps, and damage from past maintenance. That's just par for the course. It's like a 1960 receiver. What do you expect? So yeah, this one's kind of beat up, but it's working well. The other thing that I see a lot on these receivers for failures are the tubes, especially the 6BA6, which is right in the center of the receiver. It seems like that one is always dead. Anyway, if you have one of these and you do maintenance on them, always check the tubes. I at least replaced eight tubes in this radio, but she sprang to life. Good to go again. Well, get ready for a lot more cool repairs, amp builds, ham radio maintenance, D-Lab Electronics for 2020.
trying to get back to the basics, have a little fun in the shop, not just work and drink wine. See ya.